Get that thing out of my face. Welcome to today's episode of Bike... Bike Fit Tuesday. Today we're going over fr... You I'm making me morning coffee. Today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays, we are going over frame material. If you're in the market for a new bike, watch this video first because you might learn something cool and new about current bicycle offerings. Is this really Bike Fit Tuesday, sir? Because it's not Bike Fit related at all, is it? Frame Fit Fridays. Saturday. What? Fridays. Frame Fit Friday. That's catchy. So we're gonna start with aluminium. Aluminium gets a bit of a hard wrap and it tends to uh, cover the kind of low end of, 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 of bicycles, of road bikes. Uh, so your entry level road bikes will typically be made of aluminium. They tend to come with carbon fiber forks, but it depends on the kind of price point. Using this as a representation is, is a bit unfair because this is probably the best aluminium frame to have ever blessed the earth. Uh, Cannondale once upon a time did make good quality bikes. Uh, this one was handmade in the US. This is a Cannondale Cab 9 and frankly represents Probably like the best mix and blend of performance, comfort, weight, and what have you. This was, back in the day, was chasing down carbon frames in terms of weight and, and stiffness. Aluminium as a material it tends to be quite rigid, so uh, from a racing standpoint, it can be pretty good. One of the drawbacks of aluminium, though, is that it tends to trans it tends to be really good at transmitting vibrations to the rider. So what, one of the one of the things that Cannondale, uh, one of the first brands to uh, to adopt was uh, hydroforming techniques to basically use tubing profiles to improve compliance in the frame. So you can see on this bike that you the, the seat stays are, are, are stacked to be narrower, then they're put into an hourglass shape to offer a bit more compliance to the rider. But typically aluminium frames are TIG welded, there are several different grades of aluminium and those different grades will offer different strength, different weight, different compliance characteristics. One of the benefits of aluminium, uh, particularly from a race standpoint, is you can dent a tube and the, the whole the bike will still be completely rideable. Actually once upon a time I, had, I put my bike on a train to go down to Bath to see my mate Tony and uh, some dropped his bike on my CAD 10, I had a later generation Cannondale, and dinged the top tube. I think it was only about three weeks old at the time, and it was it ruined my week. But anyway, the bike was absolutely fine, and you can carry on riding it with no problem at all. In certain instances with carbon fiber, and we're gonna get onto this in a little bit later in the video, you can have a situation where you see sort of delamination occurring if, the, if you've got some impact of the frame. So yeah, with aluminium, you can potentially, you can crash it, you can, you can ding it. It's a little bit hardier uh, because it's a metal frame. So uh, it tends to try and, it tends to be a, a good material for budding racers. It can be just as stiff and just as light as carbon fiber. Uh, what, it, what it tends to lack is the compliance factor. So our next representation is a prime example of how not all carbon frames are created equal. Uh, carbon fiber bikes come in a million and one shapes and sizes. It's becoming one of the more popular materials to make bicycles out of because it is cheap, it's lightweight, it's durable, it's extremely strong. To debunk a myth about carbon fiber's brittleness, which I feel stems from sort of the early 2000s, whereby people thought that if it kind of fell over, it would break. Well, there's a reason we make F-16 fighter planes and Formula One racing cars out of carbon fiber. It's extremely strong. It's got a very high impact resistance. So as a result, we can use a lot less of it. And that's what tends to yield the lightness in the frames. Carbon fiber we're seeing is, is by far and away the most, it's probably the best value for money performance material because you can, you can build a carbon frame very, very cheaply and relatively speaking, and, and get an incredible amount of performance out of it. Carbon fiber frames have advanced to the point now where you're seeing incredible quality at a very, very low price. So for example, at sort of one to 2,000 pounds, you're getting a carbon frame that would have been, you know, top of the range quality in terms of ride quality and, and performance 10, 15 years ago. Ultimately, they're all pretty much made in the Far East, so they all come out of the same factories. Not all frames are created equal. Something like this, tends to get you get you tend to get a lot more feedback from it than you will do a mass produced frame but a lot of that's built into the fact that i mean you know this is almost an 8000 pound bike frame so uh, as with all of the other frame materials not all frames are created equal just because something is carbon fiber doesn't necessarily mean it's an equal to you know something that costs three times more there are different construction methods there are different levels of quality in the raw materials also where they're made has a massive impact on the overall, uh, the overall cost and build quality of them. One of the negatives of carbon fiber is that it's very good at hiding damage. So 
quite often you will have aesthetic layers um, over the top of a structural layer because carbon fiber as a, as a, as a product or carbon fiber products typically are made are comprised of a series of layers which are then bonded together with epoxy resin and put into a uh, put into an autoclave, heated up and put it under pressure. If it sustains an impact you can end up with a situation where the structural layers are damaged but the aesthetic layers aren't because typically the aesthetic layers can be a little bit more flexible. So as a result you can end up with hidden damage. Quite often I mean there are specialized there are specialists in, in certainly in our area that provide um, both carbon fiber inspection and repair services and uh, yeah that's something that typically results in the need to x-ray thing. It can be costly and I would I'm, I'm not entirely convinced on the longevity of it personally but ultimately in terms of performance for your money particularly for racing carbon fiber is pretty hard to beat it's light stiff strong uh, and cheap it's worth noting the forks which is this part here that the front wheel inserts into are almost always made of carbon fiber even on aluminium steel and titanium frames again it's a compliance thing so it tends to help absorb vibrations from the road that's something i didn't even talk about with carbon fiber is, is, is typically due to the layering nature of it it tends to be very good at damping and absorbing vibrations from the road again though it's not all carbon frames created equal particularly when you've got a deep truncated aerodynamic tube very very good at transferring vibrations versus something like this which is a little bit slimmer will typically be a lot more compliant so tube profiles also play a, a large role in how a bicycle rides but even with a carbon fiber frame steel still gets a pretty bad rap and a lot of people think that it, it it's a it, it's an old fashioned material and and to a certain extent it is you know british uh, uh, british frame builders were you know the best in the world once upon a time because british engineering we're very good at building things in sheds steel is very easy to be built in a dirty environment as with carbon and aluminium there are several different grades of steel so you, you know right at the bottom end you've got your sort of pig iron chromoly stuff which is very very heavy and uh, tends to be plain gauge tubing which means that they don't extrude any material from the inside of it i'll talk about that more of that in a minute all the way up to something like this which is a columbus xcr stainless steel this is very very expensive this is also tig welded so rather than being um, brass brazed or lugged it's it's, it's tig welded so it's, if the tubes are physically welded together uh, which tends to yield a lighter again more compliant frame steel is my preferred material to, to ride road bikes for on the grounds that it tends to be a little bit more organic i feel that it handles better because it isn't quite as rigid uh, it's typically a little bit more comfortable than, than a lot of carbon frames but it, it can rust for a start is, is one of the is one of the main negatives typically depending on the value or sort of depending on the on the quality of steel it can be heavier but you know this bike weighs seven and a half kilos so you, know, you can you can also see that you can get something very lightweight in the last decade we've seen a real resurgence in, in steel coming back to, to the bicycle industry it's typically in the custom realms i mean independent fabrication is is one of them and this is an american brand but certainly in the uk we're seeing uh, like i said a massive resurgence from people like our friend rob quirk who builds beautiful frames if you haven't if you haven't heard of him you should go and check him out oh and actually rob did something very cool in terms of rusting he made my other mate dylan a stainless steel bike yeah because he was worried about it yeah. rusting because he works on a boat rob's even using 3d printed components now 3d printed bottom brackets or dropouts of things so steel is definitely coming into the new age it's definitely a much more of a connoisseur's kind of choice it's it's not the, the Rafa Condor team would have you believe that it was really really great for racing. I'm not quite so sure, but certainly for, for kind of longer distance stuff, it can also be more easily repaired. You know, you can re-weld it and you can patch it. Uh, so you know, if you're in the middle of you know, deepest, darkest China or something, then you, know, you can have the thing re-welded. Typically, steel frames tend to be at the at slightly higher end of the market. Um, you know, so you, you're, you're generally talking custom bikes. There are uh, you know other other brands out there like Fairlight, for example, who build off-the-shelf steel frames out of like Reynolds 853, which is a kind of mid-level steel. In conclusion. It's comfortable, it can be lightweight, and it, it has like a really nice organic ride quality, uh, but it tends to operate at a, at a slightly higher price point. You don't really get finer representations of titanium than Moots, who are handmade out, out in Steamboat, Colorado. Uh, we do also carry number 22, uh, independent fabrication to a titanium frame, and Stelbell, our, our new brand, which I'm gonna talk about in a bit. It's worth noting that titanium frames, again, as is with the case with all of the other materials, they're not created equal. This is potentially a very unpopular opinion, but 
Far Eastern or cheaper titanium frames aren't really worth buying. They ride like aluminium bikes for the most part. Uh, they're typically quite a lot harsher. Uh, and one of the things that we've come to find, particularly with cheaper titanium frames, is that usually when you, if you look around the welding areas, they're typically overcooked. So when I say overcooked, I mean the, the frame has overcooked the TIG welder. Which what that means is that you end up with more expansion and contraction of the material and essentially it, it yields a more brittle join. Uh, so essentially the frame fails. Titanium as a material is very, very difficult to work for. Uh, is very difficult to work for. It's very, very difficult to work with. It needs to be built in a very clean, very sterile environment. Therefore it doesn't work very well in British sheds. It also needs to be saturated in argon gas when it's being welded. Now, if these prerequisites aren't met, you end up again with a, 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 a join that isn't, is, is quite brittle. So this is part of the reason why titanium frames are so expensive because it's just really difficult material to work with. What you get though is a similar quality in a similar ride quality to steel but it's a little bit livelier the material typically is a bit lighter something that i didn't mention about the steel frame and it's also the case with aluminium in fact we'll just say blanket statement across metal frames there is a process known as butting what butting refers to is uh where they extrude material from the inside of the tube you've got single butting double butting triple butting and then there's things like ultra butting which is where they take up loads of material what it means is that you end up with a welding point that is the, sta the standard gauge of the tube and this part is thinner which is then thinner here and thinner here the thickness of the tube tapers as you get towards the middle of the tube what that yields is a uh, lighter weight naturally because you're taking material from the inside of the tube but you do also get better compliance properties from it as well to summarize again in my opinion titanium is the sort of the creme de la creme of, of, of ride quality for, for particularly road bikes but also gravel bikes because you get a lovely ride lively ride quality good levels of compliance um, and it tends to be pretty lightweight and durable it's got very high impact resistance very strong it does certainly uh, tend to be a lot more expensive or in my opinion it should be a frame like this is six seven thousand pounds if you're thinking about spending two three thousand pounds you're better off with a a high-end steel frame than you are a low-end tie frame. That marks the end of today's episode. Let us know in the comments what material frame are you riding? Do you like it? Is it something weird? Because we covered four here, but there's certainly some extra ones, for example, bamboo. Have you ever come across a bamboo frame? Yeah, I've had one in here. Was it weird? Yeah. And what do you think? A bicycle frame that's made out of bamboo. That's what might have happened in, in Vietnam, mightn't it? If we got lost in the jungle for much longer, we'd have had to fashion bicycles out of bamboo. What, to replace Lawrence's bike? Yeah. If you want to check out James's shop, I'll put a link down below where you can book a bike fitting. Please like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys soon.